yards or, or so, and he pulls out a one iron. And of course, today nobody uses a one iron. But he pulled out this one iron and he hit this beautiful draw right along the tree line, right on the green. And it was one of the most beautiful shots I've ever seen. And it was, it was fun having in the Cleveland Open here. A lot of excitement. Um, and, I, and I think the only reason we didn't have it again is because they were offering us $50,000. And we had to close the golf course for literally two weeks because they were out here for practice rounds and the, the, the golf course had to be in pristine shape. The, we let the rough grow to about six or eight inches and uh, the membership just didn't, didn't feel it was worthwhile for that kind of money to lose so many days during the height of the season. So then I think the Cleveland Open went to Aurora Country Club or somewhere and then finally faded out of existence. But it, it, was, it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. And R.H. Sykes, who's long gone, I guess, has the record here. What do you have, a 61 or 62? 62. Um, that's the scorecard that's in the men's, men's grill. But it was, it, was, uh, it was fun. Were those two tournaments well attended? I mean... Well, not like they are today. Right. It, was, it, was, it was pretty good attendance. But, you know, in those years, across Bradley Road, that was an empty field. And that's where we had the parking. Because a, a farmer's field was there, there were no homes. That <laughs> was completely empty. So we had plenty of, plenty of parking space. And it was fairly, fairly well attended. And I think the remarkable thing, I, I think the, the lowest score that was shot was like an eight or nine under by Dave Stockton. Who won it. Who won it the second year yeah, that we had it. And that's, that's really pretty remarkable. And you know, they praised the golf course. It was a, in those years we had more trees and the rough was, was terrible. It was six or eight inches long. So if you got in the rough, you know, it was a pitch out. So it was, it was interesting. It was a very, very uh, enjoyable period of time. Uh, you know, I, th I think it would have been nice to have it here now mm -hmm. with the new tees that we have. I don't know whether we could attract, uh, you know, a, a tournament, but the uh, Champions Tour and get Dave some Stockton to come back and play. Champions Tour would be absolutely great. Right. You know, there's really, a, other than occasionally at Canterbury there's and, and Firestone, there's really no other tournaments played here in the Cleveland area. Right. Yeah. So it would be great on the west side of Cleveland. Go through your memory of characters that we've had in the club who have, uh, or people, not maybe characters, who have that stand out in your memory uh, for the accomplishments or maybe even funny things that happened uh, through the years. Uh, oh God, there's so there's so many, so many guys. I, I look back at an old fellow. I, I don't know why I thought of him not too long ago. Bob Payne. Did you ever remember him? Oh sure. Bob Payne was the biggest contrarian in the world. I mean, he was against everything, <laughs> no matter what it was. He was against it. Um, and we had some other great guys. It was, you mentioned John, John um, um, Packle, mm -hmm. uh, Andy Hornick. Jerry Sindelar, um, Porter. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we had so many wonderful, and a lot of those fellows are still down in Florida. Uh, Andy Hornick is a member at Atlantis Country Club. Jerry Sindelar has passed away, and Porter is down there somewhere. But there's a, there were a lot of characters. Uh, Packle mentioned Hoot Gibson, who was probably the biggest character that we ever had here at. <laughs> At Lakewood Country Club, he was quite quite a guy. Yeah, yeah that's great. Uh, we've talked about pros and greenskeepers uh, through these interviews, and uh, things that uh, have occurred. Uh, any comments about uh, either greenkeeping, greenskeeping areas, or or pros or sister pros that stand out in your memory? Well, we've we've had we've had some good assistant pros here. Um, 
uh, Jerry Boykin and, 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 and Waitro have, have picked out some very good guys. Rob Moss, is, uh, who's one of our you know, recent uh, assistants, is certainly a, one of the best golfers in the Cleveland area and a great guy. Um, uh, he's over at Pepper Pike now, which I think is a great job for him. That's, that's a wonderful club. And he'll probably be there till he dies because uh, they don't change pros very often over there. And of course, Charlie Lott, you know, was a great green superintendent. One of the things that all of us old timers talk about, Dave, is the fact that one of the things that Lakewood prided itself on were our flowers. And the golf course during the summertime was ablaze with flowers everywhere. And we had an old fella here, and I don't even remember his name, Vic. I don't know if you no, do. I know, I know what you're talking about. And his major job was to take care of the flower beds. He'd weed them and he mulched them up and tended to the flowers. And everybody that came to play at Lakewood Country Club would say, my God, what a gorgeous club. And they'd all go back to their respective clubs and say, we've got to do what Lakewood does. <laughs> well, of course, today we're almost devoid of, of flowers um, for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason is. I think uh, Jim Noel is not a flower lover, but he's done a good job on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Nick, in the, your tenure in 82 and during the early 80s, um, anything stand out about a particular challenge you had to deal with? Or? Well, the biggest, I think the biggest challenge is when we, we uh, did this renovation. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that uh, is, is a problem with Lakewood Country Club is that it is almost impossible for us to pass an assessment. Um, because of the bylaws, they require two-thirds of the membership to vote in the affirmative. Well, you can't really even get two-thirds of the membership <coughs> to vote. Right. So it's, it's been almost, I, I, it's hard for me to even remember when the last time is that we were able to pass a, an assessment. So the, the boards and the presidents have used subterfuge to get things done. Uh, calling things maintenance, um, like we just had the pool done. Uh, how that was never presented to the membership, I don't understand. Um, but to go out and borrow almost a million dollars without membership approval I, is something that uh, could not have been done when I was president. It would have been a complete uproar with the membership. But we had to use things like uh, maintenance, like we built this thing, we call this a maintenance project. And we had to double dues for, for a few months to get things done. But this was, this was a, uh, uh, a job getting this done in the, in the pub, which used to be a, a, there used to be a screen porch there. And we, we covered that in, we put this, this room up here and did a few other things. Um, had a lot of town hall meetings where we talked to people about what was going to be done. And it was, it was tough to get that done. But it was enjoyable being president of the club. It was um, a challenge. Um, I'm not sure I want to go through it again, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. The, 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 uh, the key thing that you've talked about, I think, really is the, uh, the people. And I think that's true in most organizations. Uh, the facilities are important and can be a detriment as well as an advantage over a competition. But the people themselves are the key to the, the club and the longevity of it and yeah. the draw that they come to it. And I think your comments about that are very, very true. There are things that have happened that are funny uh, that bring up like a couple of conversations we've had about uh, where some members that we had were in the National Guard and they flew over this uh, course with a jet and everybody thought the Russians had come. Um, yeah. Jerry, Jerry Cord <laughs> Cordes and Pete Backrus. 
famous names in they, the Yeah, they singed the trees. <laughs> they were subsequently kicked out of the Air National Guard. <laughs> but I remember that was a that was a Saturday Saturday morning. They they really buzzed the golf course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The two of them. They yeah. were, and they were characters. Yeah. There there are a lot of those people like Bob Payne, as you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, there are those people. Well, you know, as as we all get older, you know, families are, are so important, but boy, so are friends. And the friends that you've made, places like this that go back 40 years, are just, are just wonderful. And for me particularly to come back here after a winter in Florida, which I've been doing for a lot of years now, come back and see all my old friends, just wonderful. <laughs> really is. Any um, tournaments stand out in, in your memory? Any great rounds? Have you had a whole one out here? Or? Well, I have, I have been playing golf for 70 years, and I have never had a hole in one. Me neither. <laughs> and um, I hope before I die that I do have a hole in one. I've come awful close many, many times, but I've never had a hole in one. But I do remember one, one tournament, it was a President's Cup. And um, I was playing in it, and we, ha we had a, I don't know whether it was class, class A or double A, I forget at that time, but we had like a five-way tie, and we had a playoff. We started off on the first hole, and we all hit our shots up, and I was right on the fringe of the green, and the, the, on my second shot, and the pin was sort of towards the back. And I, I was the first one to putt, and I knocked it in for a birdie. <laughs> and won the President's Cup, which was, which was a lot of fun. That was, that was great. Really enjoyed that. What about, uh, it seems like nowadays the tournaments are kind of more of an afterthought here. I mean, it, there was so much tradition to, you know, the jamboree and the green coat, and I, don't, I just don't feel that anymore. Do you, you know where I'm coming from when I say that? Or? Dave, I think it's a sign of the times. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's uh, what I talked about previously, the camaraderie that we all used to have uh, the closeness that we have with, you talk about the Jamboree, with Westwood members. I mean, God, there are members over there now that remember when we all played together um, and we had those friendships as well as the ones here. I'm not sure that exists anymore. And I, you know, I, I can't tell you why, but those are important things and I think that's part of what makes a club great. And uh, all the members that, uh, I mean, I can go to Westwood today and I, they have their senior round table there and I know everybody there mm -hmm. because we all played in the Jamboree together. And uh, we had a, you know, we usually had the same partner. I had a fellow by the name of Doug Mitchell that I played with for years. And uh, we, we just had a wonderful time. And I, I don't play in it anymore because I'm not, you know, Sometimes I'm not here. <coughs> well, those have been all classic uh, events that we've had over the years. And uh, some have, from the Lakewood days, with crazy golf, uh, to the Jamboree Invitational. Well, uh, <coughs> here's, a, here's a thing to put into the memory bank. <coughs> Lakewood Day used to be a pretty wild affair. And we used to have uh, young ladies out on the golf course, uh, scantily clad. And uh, when you teed off on the first hole, Hoot Gibson was there with a shotgun. Just as you went back on your, on your backswing, Hoot would, would uh, shoot the gun off. <laughs> you could hear it all over the golf, golf course. And the young ladies were out there, and they had bets on, on the holes. and. Uh, had bars set up, and it, it was it was a whole different setup. Now it's just it's another day of golf, you know. And those are the things that we all remember. And I hope someday some of the younger members 
have some good memories that they can talk about too. Not sure they will, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how long have you been a member here, Dave? My job 